Hello everyone and welcome to our how to play video for Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions. This is the newest card game from Playfusion, who you might know from such games as Lightseekers. So we're excited to take a look at this. We picked this up at Gen Con 2018 and now we're gonna get it on the table and show you how to play the game. Zach, you've played it a few times. I have played a couple of games. What do you think immediately, like kind of off the bat, Whoa. about this game that, review. that people should know before they uh, dive into the, the video? So I'm very unfamiliar with the 40K history and lore um, and whatnot, and even Age Slash of Sigmar, right? Warhammer, right, yeah. So Warhammer, Warhammer, there's the fantasy element, which is the old school stuff, and then there's the 40K, which is like the, the new school yeah, stuff. Yeah, so it's very hard for me to talk about the theme and whether or not this accomplishes that feel, but I will say, after playing a couple of games, it was a really refreshing take on this kind of a game. So it's very different, like lack of resources and just it's it's That's more the about new thing, right? it is the new thing. People are doing that. There are a lot over. of games like that, at Gen Con, but managing your actions and your hand size and what's going on uh, was a very interesting and kind of a compelling look. And so I'm excited to dive dive in more deeply, I guess. But I, it's been several days now, and a, the haze of Gen Con has faded, so I don't even really quite remember how to play, so I'm hoping you can handle that Don't here. worry, I definitely do. The first thing that we're going to do is uh, notice that what we're playing is the starter decks here, and those come in some really, actually, nice packaging. This is a great way to kick off a game and to give an entry point to new players. Uh, other you know, people slash organizations should take note. You have four factions in the game, and you have four faction starters. <coughs> Each of those starters has a 30 card deck of your playable cards during the game. It also has four champions. Those will be kind of your main things out on the board, and then four blessings. You have everything you need. It also comes with a booster pack to get it, you know, to get your, your <laughs> to get the blood pump early. Uh, and that's then pretty a cool. Book. So there's a booster pack in the starter. Uh huh. Uh, that's really cool. A rule book, and then one of these uh, play mats, which is actually really nice. It's just, uh, it's just hard to play on paper. Well, paper and it's things. also it's kind of shiny. So when you're filming with lights and stuff, it makes it difficult to see that's anything. Right. So. So let's start by determining the age-old question, who is going to be the first player? I'm gonna grab a die, I guess we're rolling off. Now, we, we got these at Gen Con because we didn't bring anything to uh, play games with, which was hilarious for us to do. But I love these dice so much. It reminds me of the Star Wars TCG. You said that quite often. Something huh? old. You got a six. Six, I'm gonna go That'll first. You. So tell me what's going on here. How I do I win, the, what do I do? The first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna place our champions on the board. Okay. And this is a what I would consider a very structured card game. So we're gonna have four lanes of combat, essentially. And those four lanes are gonna be dictated by where our four champions are. Okay. So we're gonna be facing off against each other and our four lanes are going to line up. And I'm gonna start by essentially placing my first champion. So it's gonna go, I place one, you place two, I place two, you place two, I place one. Okay. So first player has to kind of unveil where they're going to be a little bit sooner, but they have a little bit more uh, adaptability in the later placing of their champions. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do the far right lane here. This is Mega Boss on Mach Russia. Now there's a, n a number of things to note about these champions that we'll get into throughout the game. But the key thing when you're placing champions is to look at this little uh, track down here that tells you more or less where they want to be. So this is a, a champion that affects everybody on your side of the board. Okay. When you look at these little graphs, that's considering everything in front of your space in your little four lanes. There's basically four pathways, four mm -hmm. grids here. And so he's targeting everything in the four pathways. So it doesn't really matter where, where he, he is positionally. So I'm just gonna put him out of the way and off to the side. So he's on the edge of your four options. That's basically. correct. So yeah. now as a second player, I have to place two of my champions. You place two. Uh, and so what I will do, and this is this is actually pretty cool because you're slowly revealing your champions to your opponent. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously full constructed, I assume there's a ton of champion options. And so you don't really know what you're dealing with. Yeah, you get to build your positionally, deck. positionally. Um, because I know some of the champions affect each other as well. Mm -hmm. So like they're kind of facing off in a weird way. You could not know like my final champion could be something that's like, ah, if he has that weird spell caster, like it totally yeah. screws up my yeah. positioning. So I have two skeleton champions um, and they don't affect any, they're just very generic. They have they have point cost over here. Green over here is the point cost, right? Green is the point cost and then red is gonna add or subtract to our ultimate health total before we start the game. So they're one ones, very generic. So I'm just putting them on the outside uh, and I'm saving the reveal of my bigger champions uh, for in a minute. All right. So then you have to place one or two. And then I know, I know place two and I'm going to place my two Auric bosses, Ooh. similarly vanilla units. The one ones. Um, to just kind of get my board pieced out so that you can kind of understand how this is looking. Cool. So this lane is now lined up, this lane is lined up, and now we have two in the middle. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play, now I play one. 
Or yeah, both? you play both. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to play a Bloody Vampire Queen and the Hungering Vampire Lord. I am the vampires. The Vampire Queen uh, has an ability to affect all of your units, and then the Hungering Vampire Lord has just a generic. It's a heroic ability. act. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. And then my final one will come into play, and you can now see what I'm talking about in terms of targeting. So this Shaman is targeting, you see these two green boxes? You always start from in front, so it's going to target anything in these two spaces. And so that's going to be good for me. If he was only outside, that's a problem because one of the spaces he affects doesn't do anything. Correct. Yeah. So I could basically go here or here, and I chose here. Very cool. Because my assumption is that these orc bosses are going to be spitting out units. Now, before we go any further, a couple of notes on the champion cards themselves. Some of them are warriors, some of them are wizards, and some of them are warrior wizards. I was going to say, my two champions in the middle are both warrior wizards, and you see that with the red and the blue. And that's really handy card. for you. So warriors can only play units and abilities, whereas wizards can play spells or abilities. Yeah. So basically, your, your, your warriors are going to be putting out actual like armies and units, and then your wizards are going to be casting your spells. One thing that's important to note is that wizards, when they're concentrating on spells, can't do much of anything else. Warriors, whenever they're moving units around, they can still use abilities, whereas wizards cannot. Now, as a warrior wizard, you can do anything you want. So, congrats to you. Yeah, but at the same time, vampire. if I do put down a spell, so you basically play units or spells in these slots in mm -hmm. front of your champions. Um, and what you're saying is if I put a spell in front of my warrior wizard or you put one in front of your wizard, um, they're basically locked down. That's right. They can't play because their abilities, which are kind of like a one-time event that discard, right, um, that your champions can do. And... Technically, these guys can do both, but even if they are casting a spell, that means they can't do it. Anymore. Right. Anyone concentrating yeah. on a spell is really just focused, Very cool. as we know. So now we have four blessing cards that came with our deck. We don't reveal these to our opponent, but we are going to... We would choose these during deck building uh, in a standard game, and then we shuffle them up randomly mm. to signify that we can choose how we want to be blessed, but the <laughs> gods are always a little bit tricky uh, in how they... Dole now, those blessings out. Blessings are, for context, a they're powerful, usually pretty powerful abilities that happen, and they'll, we'll show you how that happens in a minute. Um, but basically, each champion can get blessed uh, That's in right. a certain way. They have so, to. They have to essentially. This is a really cool game in that it's going a number of different directions at the same time. You're, you're ultimately playing the macro game of trying to remove all of your opponent's health to win, uh, which is a good thing to mention in a how to play video. But the second thing is you're actually also, all of these champions are on a quest. And once they complete their quest, they will reveal the blessing underneath and it will have an immediate impact. Yeah. Now how a champion gets through a quest is you'll see that all four of these corners have an icon in them. So anytime you do something in this champion's lane that achieves that objective, you're going to get to rotate that unit. And it's hard to get in the habit of rotating counterclockwise. Probably the hardest part of the entire game. And so as these <laughs> things are done, you're rotating this champion, and when it comes back around to its normal thing, you get to flip the blessing, and now you've achieved your quest. And sometimes those blessings are immediate effects, sometimes mm -hmm. they're lasting effects, and sometimes they're cards like the champions that can rotate and have different abilities based on when they're rotating. That is correct. I also want to note that the health that we're trying to basically get each other to zero at is not based on the actual champions. They do affect it with the, the red that you were, you were noting earlier, but basically there is a combined health that we just start the game with that we modify based on these red numbers, correct? Yep, it's very simple. We can go ahead and do that now. Start with 30 and then go ahead and add and subtract based on the numbers showing. So this mega boss is actually quite cool. It gives me two additional health, which is I think That's signifying awesome. the hardiness of the orcs. And then four total bonus from my uh, units and then minus one from the shaman because you know you probably gotta do some blood sacrifices and stuff. So that would put me at 33, which okay. I will represent here. And then mine, I actually, it's funny, I have two plus ones from the skeleton champions and two minus ones from my other champions, so I just start out at 30. Nailed it. Also important to note here, um, I believe the max amount of health is 35. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. We did it. All right, so I believe that's right. At 31, I need to go to 33. <laughs> oh, go. it was right before. All right. And so now we've gotten our health, we've got our blessings on the table, we've got our champions on the table, and I want to go ahead and shuffle my deck if you haven't done so. I've been do shuffling it for a already. Minute, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that a little bit. And you got to say, these card backs are really um, 
fascinating. There, I, there's parts of them that I really love and parts of them that I'm curious. They, so but like, they sparkle really nicely. They do. They? they they have this like um, almost spot gloss feel to them mm -hmm. on, on certain elements of it. Uh, and then, I mean, the thing the thing about this game, the design of it, at first I saw it and I was like, well, that's not, I, I'm very into like minimal modern design. Um, and this very much, the whole game and all of the art and even the, the card template in the back of the cards feels like it's from the 80s, um, which is where 80s, 90s, where Warhammer really uh, originates from. And I think a lot of this art is from the original uh, artwork. So I, I get the sense that basically they were able to raid the coffers of Games Workshop and use any of that traditional art that they could. And that kind of is what was an indicator of the game being possible. I think you, you don't have to pay for all these art assets and you can just go get it and put a game on top of it. It's a really good way to kind of streamline that production sure. process. And you know, even all the way to the card back is interesting to me because it does feel like something that would have been made uh, in the 70s or 80s. And so even all the old art choices, I'm sure if they had access to the old art, they probably had access to all the art for Maybe. Age of Sigmar. And if that's the case, it's like, I kind of like going at least up front with this first set with the shtick of like, old feeling art. It, did, it makes me feel, I remember I was like probably seven, eight years old and I was getting all sorts of weird collectible things at the time, just random like packs and just stuff that would sure. show up. A new little starter deck for, because there were a dime a dozen card games back then. And this takes me right back to that place and I, I actually completely love it. All right. Um, so first player is going to draw four cards right off the bat and then the second player, you, will draw five. All right. Card advantage achieved. Now, one, one important thing in this game, something that we realized when we were playing, is that card draw is supremely important. It's very similar uh, in Light Seekers. Because there's no mandatory draw in the game, you, you really have to manage maintaining your hand so that you can continue to play well into future turns versus just cashing in all your cards and then sitting on your hands for a couple of turns. And I think timing is the number one word about this game for me, which is it's all about the timing of playing, of drawing, and activating things. So uh, that's, that's one thing I really liked about the game. It just felt like it was leveraging time as a resource yeah, instead of resources as a resource. It's very good. Uh, which is cool. It's, it's a very different take. It's what you want to do. Okay, so now we're going to move into the flow of the game. So during our first turns, we aren't going to deal with the first phase of the game, which is where you essentially do all the battlefield stuff. You rotate everything, you resolve any effects, trigger anything that needs to be triggered, and then you go to the action phase, where we're both going to play two actions. So I'll get to play two, and then my phase will be done, or my turn will be done, and then I'll go over to you, you'll play two, and that's the kind of back and forth. So two actions, and this is the primary unit of the game that we're going to be exchanging is actions. Now, a lot of the cards that I play will stick around for a couple of turns. Some of the cards that I play will be immediate, and we're just going to dive right into it. So, I'm looking at my champions here. I have the top left corner of both of these bosses is playing a unit to work towards my quest. And then the mega boss over here, he needs to do damage of some kind to contribute there. And then I need to heal with my shaman to get to that point. So, let's look at what I might do here. Looking here, I've got some really good, I've got a good spell, and I've got, ooh, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, man, this is great. This is great. Okay, let's do this. I'm Se going seems to- Seems bad for me. I'm gonna start off, and I will play a uh, Call of War spell. Okay, up so in this front is a blue this. card matching the blue of the wizard template. Now, any, abil any card that you use Ha this effect that happens on it, or the effect that is on it, happens immediately. However, if there's this little X in the top left corner, then that is not, that means essentially that unit is doing nothing. It's kind of like a summoning sickness, can't use it, can't even pay attention to its abilities. It's just essentially blank right now. But it does mean that next turn, whenever I rotate this, it will do its thing and with a value of one. Anytime on these cards you see that little turny symbol, it means reference the corner that is currently active. The top left corner is the active corner on any card. So as an example, can you read that card? Yeah, it says deploy X number of auric or grot units from your hand or deck onto a highlighted champion. Now all of my champions are highlighted. But what this means is that I can sh search through my deck, deploy one of my choice onto any of these Seems spaces, pretty good. Which is really good. Yeah, and so because it's an X, you're basically deploy zero. Yep. Um, but then next turn, it'll rotate, and you actually get to trigger that ability, which Correct. we'll see in a second. And it's actually even worse than that. X literally means you cannot ignore. use any of it. Just ignore it. Just ignore it, it yeah. entirely, yeah. Um, all right, so that's my first action. My second action is let's do a Gorchapa 
Brute here, okay? Now, I'm gonna play this Gore Chopper Brute. He does one damage to your opponent. If the Highlighted Champion costs seven or more, the damage is done with Rind. Now, your champion costs nine. Rind means that it can't be reduced by reduction effects. Okay, cool. There are none of those out, so it's not gonna And matter. now it's showing a one. Does that just immediately happen? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So you take one damage. I'll move my die. And then this Auric Boss just played a unit in the active corner. That is the goal that I'm trying to achieve. I believe it's called ob Objectives in the game. So I will turn one to signify that he's, uh, you know, moving towards his quest. Very cool. All right, so that was your two actions? That's it. Now yep. it's to me. Now it goes to you. Now normally if I had passed any of my actions, I get to draw cards. And That's then we go important. back up to starting with your battlefield phase. You would rotate things, resolve effects. There's nothing there. So we move right to your action phase. Okay. Let me... All right. So I'm going to um, play a Frightful Touch. Doesn't do anything right now. But when it does, on the next turn, it's a four. Uh, and I do four damage to my opponent. If the highlighted champion, which is the one directly across from me, uh, does not control a unit, your opponent must shuffle two cards from their hand into their deck. Yikes. So next turn, if that triggers, uh, it will be four damage, and I'll get to shuffle two cards from your hand. Your deck, and you currently only have two cards. Seems good. So that could be very powerful. That seems really good. Oh, nice. Uh, I've, got a great, I've got a great answer to it, though. That'll be fun to, she to see. I mean, I don't. It's going to be terrible. That's hilarious. Uh, so I'm going to play here. Um, and now playing a unit, uh, we'll activate this, so mm -hmm. we we'll go ahead and rotate. But it does corners one and two, I will gain the health showing in the corners. Corner three, I draw cards equal to that value. Nice. So uh, I will gain a health. Nailed it. And then uh, those are my two actions. All right, you did it. We'll see if you have an answer. Now, the interesting thing, right, is if you do have an answer in the form of one of your cards, that's getting rid of one of your cards. Uh, so it's still accomplishing that that goal at least it's not going to do damage if you're but go ahead please that is correct so now we go to the battlefield phase and it's important to kind of get this flow down correctly for people like me for you zach you'll probably just want to run through it but essentially, <laughs> this is correct i just dive right in there first thing is you rotate everything and now there's a temptation to rotate resolve rotate resolve that's not how it works so we rotate everything that naturally rotates and you'll notice these little circles with arrows Anything that has those in the corners will do a natural rotation action during this phase. You'll notice that our champions have what's called like a clunky symbol. That means they only rotate whenever certain things are achieved that will give you the hints on the cards or the icons themselves. Sure. So these auto rotate and then any passive effects um, that are on these cards would now be active. Right. So if, if now it matters, for instance, this X is no longer a problem, if it said like, you know, during the battlefield phase, do X, Y, or Z. That would now be active as long as that unit isn't ultimately leaving the board this turn, which is known as being exhausted. Then we discard anything that is exhausted. And what that looks like is either it's gone all the way around or it doesn't have a symbol any longer. So you notice Call of War is missing two symbols. So next turn it's gonna rotate and then it will leave play. Cool. Because there's nothing for it to do. And then finally, the most important thing is we get to trigger all of the effects on all of our things. Now this actually happens in a very distinct order, which again is very important to me as a geometrically minded human being. First, we start with the blessing row. So the very bottom most row and we resolve left to right. And then the champions left to right and then the top row left to right. So obviously no blessings needing to resolve here, no uh, champion abilities needing to resolve here. And then finally we get to the goods. So deploy one Auric or Grot unit from your hand or deck onto a highlighted champion. So any champion that I would like. Let's go so ahead and you're search. you dive through your deck yeah, and, and all of your cards. I'm just, I'm just going to uh, pick you know, something. essentially pick something. I, I don't really know what I should be doing. Oh, this guy looks good. And you'll notice here, um, I'll just grab this Grot. It says a Grot unit right here. Yep. So when you're referencing your icons earlier, you see a little vampire icon. Okay, when that, I play a vampire unit, yeah. it triggers that. Because there are definitely going to be some units in here that probably aren't. That's right. So let's do this. This this guy seems like a fun... Oh, man, there's some really cool units in here. So I get to deploy, deploy it immediately it onto a highlighted really champion. Let's do... Yeah, I've got, I've got some plans. All right, and it's X'd out right now, but the next turn it's going to rotate, deal one damage, and I gain one additional action. So oh, that's wow, that's pretty good. Quite nice. So I did search my deck, so I go ahead and shuffle it. 
And then we'll move on to the Gore Choppa Brute. Right. Okay, so that's you haven't even taken an action. I haven't taken an action. So now I'm going to resolve the next effect in my chain. Deal one damage uh, with Rind because you're a fancy, uh, expensive caster. So, so deal one, up and one it can't be prevented. Correct. Now be careful because next time it's three. Seems good. All right, and that is that. You notice my rotate phase happened first, or else that guy would rotate as well. Isn't that nice? All right, so now over to my actual actions. Now, I'm gonna do something that is not great, but I think it's really fun and, and shows how the tactics in the game can work. So the first thing I'm gonna do, oh no, I can't do that. So yeah, I'm not gonna do it at all. <laughs> Maybe later. Man, that would have been really nice. I just have, the, the champion has to be disengaged, which means that there's nothing in front of it. Mm. Uh, and yeah, I, I got one of those. I only, only have one of them, yeah. So let's do a play here. This is going to be an Oryx Shield Basher. It's going to immediately do one damage to my opponent. So you can take that now. Thank right. you very Thank much. You're welcome. And then it says reduce damage received from highlighted enemies by X and increase this unit's damage reduction by one per support. Support is a ability that is based on stacking. So there is some things with a keyword called stacking that I can put on top of other units. And it's essentially like uh, making those units stronger and that's their support value. So I'm gonna reduce from here and here. Unfortunately, because I had to play him in this corner, his third reduction is not going to come into play, which okay. is not ideal. And then I'm going to pass my second action. Then I'll go to the draw phase, I'll draw, and I'll pass it right over to you. Okay, so let's walk through this. First thing I do is rotate. Rotate everything, that's right. So rotate in here. Uh, then I resolve left to right. That's correct. So nothing here. Uh, on this, I will gain one health. So uh, ding. We'll ding back up here. Uh, on this one, I will do four damage. It's reduced by one because of your ability. That's right, thank um, you. But then I also, uh, if the highlight champion does not control a unit, which is here, you don't, uh, your opponent must shuffle two cards from their hand into their deck. Strategically, I have exactly two cards. I shouldn't have drawn. <laughs> uh, so let's see, how much damage do I take? It should be three total. Three total. It by one. Done. And then you're going to shuffle two cards from your hand back into your deck. Ugh. That's a powerful spell. It's powerful, yeah. If you can't deal with it. Uh, and then I get my two actions. You get your two actions. So a quick That's question right. for me is, what is this symbol? That is an ability symbol. So that means you need to play an ability card. Um, and if you don't have one in your hand, they do exist. It just has ability instead of unit gotcha. or spell. Um, and then, quick, quick next question. Uh, I noticed that my Hungarian Vampire Lord has a heroic act. Correct. Um, and it says, it, it takes an action to activate a heroic act. Only one can be used per turn. That's right. So you, I can do one heroic act per turn. That's correct. So I could use his ability once per turn. Yep. That and that takes one of your action slots. So you can powerful. play some and use a heroic act, heroic act or draw, you know, that kind okay. of thing. Well, I will go ahead and do that. So I'll use the heroic act, and it says discard one card from my hand to gain two health. Oh, you're so vampiring around nicely there. I'll discard this, and I will go up by two. And again, the max health is 35. So it's pretty common to lose and gain health throughout the game. Yeah. And I've, I've hit that max a few times at this point. All right, so I am going to think about my action here. Don't forget your champion abilities, too. I, I have overlooked those so too, many times. Too many times? It's like when you learn a new game and you know you don't quite know where to put your attention quite yet. And you're overwhelmed by card text and I, you don't I, know what your opponent's doing. I have felt that way before. It's all very confusing and scared. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna pass my other action. So that will allow me to draw one card and then it will be your turn. Well, that was easy enough. I really like the back and forth flow. Yeah. Like only doing two things. You, a lot of things are happening, but at the same time, it's like very quick decisions. Did you ever play like those computer games where you would just like build things that would start sending units at your opponent and you were trying to essentially overwhelm them? Yeah, sure. Them? I mean, that's, that's what this feels it like. It reminds me a little bit of like tower defense. And yeah, and the structure actually is kind of refreshing in a way. I don't know what it is. It's just yeah. like, yeah, this is kind of nice. Well, it's like you have control, but you're not being mentally taxed like you can be when you have too much control. Yeah. I agree with you. All right, no cards. All right, so let's start off with the battlefield phase, shall we? So I'm rotating here. Now you notice this unit does have stacking, so I could have put it on top of another unit and done some stacking stuff, but I didn't. Uh, then Call of War is gonna rotate. Spoiler alert, it's gonna leave the board. 
This is gonna rotate, this is gonna rotate. Okay, so we rotated everything. Now we're going to look at any passive effects that matter, they're not there. And then we're going to resolve the effects. I'm sorry, we're gonna remove the exhausted things first. And then we're gonna resolve the effects. Procedure. Procedural. All right, so this is, now you notice this is the difference between an X and a zero, right? So this is actually doing zero something rather than being completely kind of, you know, void. Um, zero damage to my opponent, reduced damage received by zero. All right, All and right. then you increase the reduction by one per support. So if he was stacked up pretty nicely, you could still get some reduction even at a zero. And now, just, just for reference, stacking takes an action? Yeah, essentially, so a stacking unit, you can play it on top of any other unit, and then it becomes the active unit, and it resets all the way to the beginning. Oh. So, like, I could have stacked him on him, and this is now blank, and then the stacking unit is now on top. But that could be pretty good, especially, like, if you had one of those in your hand now, you could stack it on top of the Gore Chompa Brute, because he's going to go away next turn. That's correct. And more specifically, like, Bone Splitter Shaman says, while well, a highlighted orc unit has support two, which means there's two in the stack. So um, increase the damage done with spells by three. Wow. So as you stack units up next to you, it's pretty cool. really good. Yeah, stacking makes a lot more sense. I didn't quite get it at first. That is correct. All right, so we did zero here. There's nothing to resolve here. Let's resolve three here with Rind. If you have any reduction that matters, then do not. get Rinded. Not today. And then we have the Pouncing Wolf Rider. One damage to your opponent. Gain one additional action this turn. That's pretty good. Now this damage here, because it's through his funnel, essentially is going to trigger this damage-based objective. So I get to move that rotation. Very cool. Likewise. You notice this X symbol, now I need to remove a unit to get the next objective complete. To complete your quest. All right. I really want to draw cards because I don't have any. And okay. so you notice there's not a lot for me to do. I, I don't have any heroic acts. Uh, there's nothing on here that is going to resolve. But I do have an additional action from this Wolf Rider, which means I get to pass three times which leaves me with three card draws. And now, is card draw structured in a way where basically at the end of the turn for every action you didn't take, you draw? Correct. It's not like pass one of my actions, draw a card. You wish it was. Yeah, no, but it's, it's not. It's you have to resolve all of your actions and then you look at the ones you passed and that draws you cards appropriately. Very cool. All right, so my turn. It's yours. First thing I'll do is I'll rotate all my cards. I will then remove my inactive card so my unfortunate spell goes away. That's a good little uh, like, you know. Yep, Blast. and then on the, I'll trigger this ability. So at corner three, I draw that many cards. So draw, I two cards. draw two cards. That's beautiful. Which is great going into the turn. Well, let me just make sure I don't have any stacking. I don't think I do. Let me read this new fancy pile of cards I have in my hand. Mm. Wow, I've got some cool stuff going on here. Wow, indeed. And so what did we say this was? That is an ability. Okay, so playing Usually a one shot turns. now, and that's where it comes down to. As long as you're not playing a spell, you can use an ability even in this stack. Okay, very cool. That's something I did not do the first game, and it made it impossible. I thought abilities were like out forever, uh, so don't make that mistake. Or do, just oh. playing a different game. <laughs> or do. Um, let's play an ability, shall we? Yeah. Bring it on. I'm gonna play Opportunity Strike uh, here. Um, two damage to an opponent, increase by three if there are no highlighted units in play. You have units, so I'm just gonna do two. Definitely have units. Uh, but that's gonna rotate her. And let me see, I don't, looks like the reduction only happens here in these two areas, so that's not gonna count. But I was ready. Okay, uh, and then I'll just pass my second action, so I'll draw another card. Well, card draw bun over and here. We'll, huh? uh, we'll go to you. Okay, now over to me. So let's be very tidy. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Any passives that matter? No. Then exhausted units, not exhausted. Definitely exhausted, nothing in the top left. And then an X. Now back to blank skis. All right. Here's, here's a question for yeah, you. Yeah, tell me. If there's a unit in front of a champion, can you replace that with another unit in your hand? I don't believe so. Okay. I've not, I've not seen any rules that... Now, of course, I've only read the rule book a few times. <laughs> and there were some things not in the rule book. So there, there could know. be something. But no, I believe that's kind of the, if that were the case, it would definitely change the, I feel like the game is all about planning out and see in like two to three turns ahead. Sure. Um, so you don't want to just be able to be like, whoops, I was not a great general that turn. <laughs> um, okay, so let's show this off. I'm going to start out with a stacking ability here. 
And so this unit has stacking, it's a grot slasher, and this is a really easy example of how this works. It says, one damage to my opponent, increase it by one per support. So I've got one support here. So that means that I'm going to do two damage All right. when it comes out, which is very nice. And then, and a quick question, this blue icon, I assume that means play a spell? Yes, it's playing a spell. So it's really, it's actually really nice for new players because while there's a lot to keep track of up front, it kind of gives you some indicators as to what you should be doing. So it's like, ah, oh, maybe I should look to play a unit right here. Maybe I should look to play an ability right here. It gives you a little bit of uh, security. Some like cues for reference. Yeah, in that structure. Um, and then I'm gonna have to make some choices here. I kind of want to show that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to pass and draw a card. Okay, how many cards you got over there? I have three cards. Not, not for who any want, particular who wants reason. to know? All right, so I'll rotate, then I'll remove any inactive, which includes this. My board is blank, uh, and I get my two actions. Let's see what I want to do here. First thing I'm going to do is play a Freakish Crypt Horror, um, triggering the play here. So I'll rotate. Uh, on. It does damage to my opponent and gains health for whatever the corner nice, is. Nice, yeah. So he's blank now, and next turn will be one. Thank blank goodness. Two. Uh, and then my second action will be to pass. So I will draw another card. Yeah, pass on. All right, we're getting it now. You feel it? I do. You're starting to feel the flow? Um, there's certain cards I'm looking for here. I know right. those blessings are super powerful, so I just want to get there. Let's rotate. It's kind of a fun little side game, ultimately. You just kind of feel cool doing it. All right, so let's do two damage here, one per so support. One, two. And then let's do one damage here. And blazing then now. I gain an additional action. So I've got three actions. That guy is awesome. So good. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the orc magic. Uh-oh, I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, I know. Isn't it, doesn't it sound fun though? Okay, let's do three actions. I'm going to start with a stack here. Oh my goodness. So that starts you back at the front, it's but he stacks two. His back and stack two. Two damage to my opponent. If he has support two, which he does, it's done with Rin, so it cannot be avoided. So two more damage to you, please, sir. That's awesome. That also turns my Shaman on, which is one of my favorite things to say in any game. Second action. Let's go ahead and play a Brute Smash here. A Brute Smash here. It does have stacks, so I could put it here, but I want to go ahead and uh, get this objective achieved. And that, again, is going to be two damage uh, Man, to you. I'm down to 18 here. And then... I will pass my third action. Thank you, Wolf Rider. He needs to go. And I'll draw a card. All right, mine. It's yours. Yeah. I'll rotate. So I do damage to you for one, and then I gain health equal to that. So I will gain one. I like that. I don't. I'm sure you don't. And then a question, if I have something that removes a unit that's stacked, does it remove the whole stack? Yeah, I, I think it has to, yeah. That is pretty good. Let's do that then. I'm going to play an ability here. Uh, Remove a highlighted spell unit, shuffle one unit from my discard pile into my deck. All right. So I will take that Feasting Vargeist, shuffle them back in. And then I have one action left. I feel like I'm just not doing much. Um, let's go ahead and just pass. So I'll draw a card and okay. it'll be nice. Just vampiring around over there, huh? That's my goal. All right, do you have any, uh, when this champion removes a thing, yeah, so you can move a discard to your hand. I can move a vampire unit from a discard pile to my okay. hand. And then I've got one, when this champion removes one or more highlighted unit, which is anything, uh, gain one additional action this turn. Well, that's great. And I need to remove something with his ability, so. Let's get to it, battlefield phase. The, now we remove anything exhausted, so you notice this guy came all the way back around, so. He gone. You're out of here. And then we will resolve any effects on the board, so two damage to my opponent. Seems good. I really need to find some abilities to play so I can get these orc bosses turned to their next stack. I'm looking for a vampire unit so I can uh, vampire around here. Okay. 
Well, you know what? Uh, let's do let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Let's play. Oh, but I really want. Oh man, this game is great. <laughs> a lot of options. All right, let's do a, the old wog ceremony. All right, how's that work? Or for those who have played Warhammer, they may know uh, better how to make that noise. So this says your highlighted units are dormant, and this is these two spots. So that means they won't rotate, they can't restart, and they won't resolve any effects. So they're going to sit there for a couple of turns while the ceremony is going on. That's awesome. Actually, that's very thematic. Right, and so immediately it says your highlighted units are dormant. Draw X cards for each highlighted unit. So I'm going to immediately draw one card for each highlighted unit. Wow, that's pretty good. Which is nice. And then, ooh, man, I pulled it, but it has to be a wizard. That's oh, annoying. you just took up that slot too for two yeah, spots, you know, right? For two for two turns. And what's the what's the green icon on this champion? Dude? That means it needs to heal. Okay. To go to the next step. So, unfortunately, I haven't seen anything that's really doing much of that. Uh, and then my second action, I'm going to pass. Okay. So that's going to draw me a card. So it'll be back to me. Back to you. We'll rotate. It's an X, so it doesn't do anything. That's and right. And I get my standard two actions. So the first thing I'm going to do is play a Ravenous Crypt Ghoul, which will turn this champion. Uh, it's on an X now, but then it's a 1, a 2, and then a 3. Mm, and nice. then I do that much damage to you. So this is a classic. You'll see these units in a lot of, especially in the starter decks, just this straight up, over time, doing more damage units. They're really kind of the bread and butter. Which is cool. Uh, and then I will go ahead and pass my other action. So I'll draw a card. Boy effect. And you'll notice actually that this guy is a Mordant unit, so I misspoke. So he wouldn't satisfy that. That's uh, that's play, the problem I'm running into here. We can make sure it, there's there's icons that tell us, but yeah, I mean it's it's working. I also realized mid game that these two little champions are great at getting blessings. Yeah, because just play a unit, play a unit, play a unit, and then play an ability. Here's the other thing too. Imagine this. So these orc bosses, they can trigger that multiple times with stacking. So you can play a unit, play a unit. So it might be that the orcs like pursue the blessings yeah. really quickly. I really like the skeleton champion. Yeah. Because it's just like, I, I look down, it was like I'm trying to do, play a specific person, then I got to get rid of it and play a spell eventually. And it's yeah. like, ah, this is just literally, I want like characters or units with a single thing. It's like, play it, just go, bread play and butter. it, go. <laughs> uh, okay, so over to me on the battlefield phase. He's, he's not going to rotate because he's dormant. And then I immediately draw one card for every highlighted unit. So unfortunately, we have kind of a half party here, which is not ideal. Yeah, so if you had a unit here, it would also be dormant, but you draw two cards. That's correct. Which could get pretty crazy. Should so be, how many cards are you up to now? be really nice. I got four cards in my okay. hand. That's reasonable. That is reasonable, isn't it? And I have to tell you, I've got a pretty good amount of spells that you have to kind of wait in the queue of the shaman here to... To get moving, which on is him. really pretty. Well, cool. he's busy at the ceremony. Yeah, you it's know? like he's got to conduct can only the proceedings. Do so much at a time. Sometimes in games, like the way it's designed, powerful characters like that can just keep casting like every action. It's like that doesn't seem realistic in a fantasy setting. That's right. It does. It's cool to feel this char like charging these spells. And that's really nice. Okay, so I'm I'm going to pass both of these actions just and try to get a bigger like turn a post ceremony. Yeah, I'm, so I'm kind of going uh, fair and balanced both. here with yeah. one action you decide. And, and one card here. Uh, all right, you ready? Ready. All right, so I rotate. I'm going to do uh, two damage to my opponent. I also gain that much health. All right, which ouch. Seems good. And then I will do one damage here. Done. I'm starting to even the scales. I've set almost every one of my games. One player has gotten way ahead in damage, and, and then, then slowly it turns the other way. And it's all about the card draw, really, because if you're doing a lot of damage, you're generally not drawing cards. Yeah. And so then it kind of gives it's you the that. The timing of those curves, right? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play an Arcane Bolt here. Okay. And take that slot, and it does nothing for two turns, and then it does seven. Yeah, it's so good, so right? So watch out. Can you imagine that on this Shaman? That'd be ten damage. That Just is a, a, lot of, a lot of death. Uh, so I'll go ahead and pass my other action and draw a card. Okay, great. So now we will go here and here. Now, any the thing is, any abilities that are going to exhaust are not considered active. And that's a really important thing on step two of the uh, battlefield phase chart. If you guys are following along with the rules with me, thank you. Passive <laughs> effects that are not about to exhaust are now active. So Very it cool. is about to exhaust, uh, which means it is not active.
Yeah. Now, if it had been the reverse order, this one wouldn't have rotated yet, right? I agree with you. So then this would have stayed dormant, which is super. I, I absolutely. You know, I think that's the case. Yeah. Now, obviously, cool. we're we're you know we're not super experts at the game, but I do think that that is the case. That's very cool. Uh, okay, so now. This is just a perfect unit for stacking. It literally ends its last corner with an X. It's just waiting to get uh, overridden. To be stacked. That's a re the, the orc stacking theme is actually pretty great. because It's really cool. There's like piling on top of, right? And with only four slots, it can't feel like a swarm. Like in a lot of games, it might. Where, you, you know, in the miniature game, you have tons of units out. Uh, but when you start stacking, it starts feeling like you do have this horde of orcs that are just piling on. You are so correct. Okay, so now I need to look at, oh man, that is so good. Oh man, that is so good. Um, I'm going to play a Reckless Inspiration ability. It's a wizard ability. Okay. Rotate a highlighted unit two steps forward. Okay, so he's going to go uh, boom, boom. Back to where he's talking. If that causes the unit to exhaust, which it definitely did, Gain two health and draw a card. Oh, that's pretty good. That's going to trigger my health quest. So, and boom. That's awesome. And that's an ability, so the ability goes away, right? You gain two health, yeah. And then I'll draw a card. But it's a blue ability, so it has to be played through that wizard. Through the wizard. Your shaman. Uh, and so this goes away. Now, when I was originally playing this game, I didn't know what to do with abilities, so they kind of stayed there. Just don't do that. Yeah, that's not the case. Just, just don't do it. And then for my second and final action... I'm going to play the Pouncing Wolf Rider here. Is that gain action guy again? Yeah. Does I nothing, then him. damage in action, nothing, damage in action. <laughs> All right, mine? Yep, over to you. All right, rotation time. Uh, this unit has rotated all the way around, so he's gone. Uh, the spell is on an X, the Arcane I'm scared bolt. of Not it, doing anything. It's soon to be seven. And then the Ravenous Crypt Ghoul is just going to do two damage. Two damage? Did you do one last time with him? Yep. I missed it entirely. Show did. You're just doing, doing All right. work. You ready to roll? Sometimes I sneak in a clockwise rotation and it's like, it totally ruins that the game. Ruins so just be careful. Just basically everything <laughs> about the game. All right, so I finally drew my vampire. I'm gonna play a murderous Vargeist, uh, which will turn her. She is now one turn I away. I can be the first to a blessing. From getting a blessing. She's oh, you've gotta to wait to cast a spell though. It's gonna be at least three turns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but when I play him, he will immediately do two damage. Okay. And that's actually some pretty intense art. I, I like that a lot, actually. Good art. Yeah. Some good stuff lurking. So two damage, and then that's one action. And again, I'm taking the uh, slow and steady route here. I'll pass my second action, yeah. draw a card. I like it. Well, see, I'm just looking at, so like this Reckless Inspiration card, you know, that's a good way to clear a unit out of your stack so that you can advance the quest even quicker. Yeah, that's what I was looking at earlier, too. Some of my cards allowing me to clear my own units out for that very purpose. Because really nice. I will tell you, I'm excited for one of us to hit a blessing. Oh, yeah. Because so, that's one of the coolest parts of the game. It's just kind of there's a there's a, uh, an excitement to it. It's kind of like young Steven is it's coming like, out. It's uh, like, you know, going Super Saiyan or something. Feeling. That's right. It's like, you may not win, but like at this moment, that's pretty cool. Okay, well, I've got to do something about this. Um, I'm going to do something about this Arcane Bolt. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you should. So, first of all, we're going to resolve here. One damage to an opponent and gain one additional action. So I got three actions. Let's see if he's got an answer. Let's do a Mystic Shield here. Okay. It's going to reduce damage from everything on the board. By two my first turn, one the second turn, then it'll go away. Super cool. It's also going to advance because I cast a spell. So I'm looking for abilities here. Look at this. I got... Um, I need my abilities. You have three champions waiting to, to be abilitied. That's right. Um, and then, ooh, see, yeah, this is good. I don't want to play these guys yet. I'm going to pass my, my remaining two actions because I had the extra to draw two cards. Okay. So rotation time. Rotation time. Okay. So this hits for two, but it's being reduced by two. Reduced by two unless it has rend. This has seven. So I take five. A casual five. Woo. And this is hitting for three, so you'll still take one. Taking one. But you just mitigated six damage. That's pretty good Mystic Shield. It's Thank you, Shaman. Pretty. It was that ceremony that really just got him juiced. Pretty solid. Um, and then I have two actions here. My first action, I'm going to play a Feasting uh, Vargeist. It does one immediately. Um, corners one and two, I gain that much health, so I'll gain one. 
uh, and then corner three is draw that many cards. So okay. it actually doesn't do any damage. So it doesn't do any damage. Great. And then, uh, my, and that rotates my champion. And then, I mean, you're just quests are pending over just there. Just waiting. And then my second action, I'll just pass, and we'll casually draw a card, and it'll be to you. Okay. And you can see the just the building curve happening, but mm. I, again, I've been doing the slow steady, right? So mm -hmm. I, now I actually I took four turns to play one card, and draw, so that and you're full up as these start moving out. I'm going to actually be able to take double actions and hopefully burst you down at the end of this game. That is right. Now, one one thing that I love about this game, just immediately, this is probably the third or fourth time working through it. Um, for some reason, and I, I know that it's very, there's gonna be a lot of people that take this game as seriously as any other card game and like really focus on the strategy and tactics. I'm having an absolute blast just watching this unfold. Like it's, it's kind of like a miniatures game in that way. It's just like, this is a cool scene that we're creating. Which is fitting, right? And it's nice. I do yeah. think there's an element of. Call me old fashioned. Kind of like a miniatures game where you build an engine and you're rotating. You build an engine and like it goes. Yeah. And you're kind of playing it out, but you're also just like, at a certain point, there's not much you can do. Um, which can either be freeing or feel restricting. That's right. It's up to you to decide. All right. So I've got I've got a weird hand, Zach. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, there's what I'm looking at here is like I've got two champions that are stuck on ability, and even this third one coming in next turn needs to play an ability to advance. And then I've got some stacking shenanigans that can get these guys to blessings immediately after playing an ability. Um, so there's a part of me that wants to try to draw into an ability. And then there's a part of me that just wants to get on with it and just start playing. What do you think it, I should do? I mean, it, it feels like if you look at my board, um, these are going to go away, and these are going to keep doing things. But like, I don't, I don't think you're necessarily in th threat range. I feel like you need to build towards whatever you're going to end the game with here. Okay. I don't I know can, what that means. I can do that. I can do that. So let's do. Let's see. Two, two, ten, three. But again, uh, blessings. I, there was one blessing I saw that was like heal ten or something. Yeah, it's crazy. Nuts. So, see, I need to draw. Do you have three actions this round? No, you don't. All right, I'm gonna do this. Okay. First action, I'm gonna do one damage to you right. straight up. And now the current total health is eighteen to sixteen. That's right. For everyone, where I'm eighteen, Steven is sixteen. And then I'm going to pass to draw a card. Okay. So it's mine. All my that was worth it. Cards are going to rotate. Um, these two cards are no longer active, so they're gone. Um, also, start on the left. Corners one, I gain that much health, so I will gain a health. Vampire stuff, uh, man. And then he is going to damage to my opponent for one, but you're reducing the damage by one, so nothing happens. Thank you, Shaman. You, you are, are just a boss. You're certainly welcome. Uh, and then oh. now I get to make some choices. I hope they're... Fun and exciting choices. Just so fun and exciting. That don't negatively impact me whatsoever. That is not like And you can always discard to gain two health, too, so it, it's helpful for you to have those cards in That's hand. part of why I just wanted to keep stacking them up. Don't uh, you so, feel like a card for two is just not enough, though? It depends on how important the it's two are, It's kind of like I guess. a necessary... It is a truly heroic act. It's like, I'm going to lose. I need to get this done. All right, let's play the Feasting Vargeist here. Uh, it matches the icon, so I'll get a rotate. Um, corners one and two, I gain that much health, so I immediately gain one. And then as my second action, I will pass. So I will draw again. Okay. And what's this, this mean? This X that is remove. You have to remove something through that unit. My deck feels like I should be removing things, but me, I keep me drawing. Me too. I don't have any removes. And then stuff. it's like nothing removes anything. It's so true. Even uh, like, her ability does the same thing. That's something that I... So early on, I thought remove was anytime something literally just left play. But then you look at the keyword, and it literally is you have to remove via yeah, the effect some kind of, of removing. Well, maybe we'll get there. Or maybe not. Oh, we will. Rotation time. Rotations make it happen. All right. And then remove anything that's exhausted. My shield goes away. All right. And then I get to resolve one damage to you. And then one damage and one additional action. I love that card. That card is so good. All right, so now I, it's so good, right? So now I have three actions. I'm going to show you the magic here. All right, hit me. First action, Opportunity Strike. Okay. It's going to be just two damage to my opponent. If you didn't have any units in play, it would do five damage. Okay. Which is awesome. So two. So that's my first action. Now and I'm down to 16. We're and tied. I get to rotate. Mm-hmm. My second action. Uh-oh, are we about to get blessed? I'm going to stack here. From on high. 
That's right, so that's gonna turn again. Did I do that right? Yeah. And that means that I get to immediately reveal this blessing. All right, now let's see what these blessings are all about. Ushering of the Wog. It is an wow. instant blessing. I draw three cards face up. Any units drawn may be deployed onto any highlighted champions, which is all champions. So, oh no, there's all my abilities. Oh no. Oh my. Oh no. <laughs> it's three abilities. It couldn't have gone worse. <laughs> so those, what, they go to your hand though, right? Uh, yeah, you I draw, draw them three. face up. Yeah. So that's so that's I, still pretty good. You either yeah, draw or play them for free. Man, I got a lot of abilities now. And that was your two actions, right? I have one left though, because uh, of that, yeah. that, that numero uh, three. Wolf Rider. So you're pretty you're moving along here. I am moving right along. I'm I'm glad you said so. Man, that's the cool part of those blessings though, is that like obviously if you built the deck, you control the blessings, but at the same time, you don't know where the certain ones are, and uh, there are going to be moments where you really just need to hit a particular blessing. Yeah. And sometimes you will, and sometimes you won't. All right. So what are you what are you looking like over here? Do you have anything particularly bad? Man. That's letting me draw a couple cards. This is healing me a little bit. Okay. How many cards are in that beautiful hand of yours? Um, none. Yeah. <laughs> I can ask this. <laughs> There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I need you to have a couple more. Not for any okay, reason, just because okay. I want you to have a couple more. I just won't play anything. Yeah, just pass. Actually, pass. It'll be great. I'm going to play a Deadly Trap. It's an ability for any type of, of champion to cast. Remove a highlighted spell or unit right across. So remove that. Now, I could have done that here and, and taken an additional action, but I want to advance his ability thing. Okay. So that's going to, okay, counterclockwise is not the way it right. goes. And one damage to you from this card. Basically, well. the way you want to turn it, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Do the opposite. <laughs> do the opposite. Thank you. Always. Okay, so is that your turn? That's it, yeah. All right, back to me. Rotate. Remove my inactive units, which I'm doing. Uh, this says I draw the number of cards in that Man, corner. You're so just I draw a, two. You're just an old school control player, aren't you? Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> oh, O S A R. O S A R. So here's a quick question for you. This is a play a spell. As soon as I play that, does she turn? That's done, yeah. And then I get to reveal my beautiful blessing. Not that you would do that. Um, I'm going to do that specifically. <laughs> uh, I'm going to play another Arcane Bolt. So Yikes. in two turns, you're going to hit, be hit with seven. Okay. And I'm going to hope that this blessing... Turn, go ahead and turn it, you know. Let's oh, yeah. keep it tidy. Okay, there we go. We'll see if this blessing's any good. Don't... Oh, that looks awesome. Right. Carrion Feast. It's a turner. Carrion Feast. It's got a three, a two, and a two in its corners. Heroic Act. I... Deal damage to my opponent, and I gain that much health, and then rotate the steps one forward. So you can take an action to do three, gain three, and then it goes to two. You can do two, gain two, then it goes to two, do two, gain two. That seems pretty good. That's really nice. So, um, let me... And you got one action left, so you could technically do that right now. So are you telling me that's a seven, that's a 14 damage swing off of that? Yes. That's incredible. Which we will get to, but I have other important things to do here. And important to note, you can't screw with blessings at all. You can't do anything. Uh, that Those are well outside of whatever our cards might impact. At least right now. Mm. Potentially in the future. But. Interesting. My second action, I'm going to play the Frenzy Devargeist. So it's an X, so nothing, but next round it's a 1. And it says uh, damage to my opponent, so 1. And then it says remove a highlighted unit, which is directly across. If unit was removed, I gain an additional action. Nice. Okay. Which doesn't make sense. So you're doing a lot of things. I'm going to do it here. Hmm. No, it doesn't Perfect. matter. This Perfect. Is, this is not a correct play, but it's fine. I'll you can just not do it. All right, let's not do it. You've got like 17 things to choose from. It's, it's hard. Just, I have a stack <laughs> of cards here. I don't know. I need you to draw more cards. I have no intention of doing that. I'm lying. All right, let's do this instead. Uh, I'm going to play this guy. Corners one and two, I reduce the damage received from the highlighted units, which is these three. So okay. it's minus one, minus one, and then corner three is deal that much damage to my opponent. Oh, nice. Opponent. Okay. Looks good. So just a nice little uh, nice little unit there. All right. So over to me, we've got the rotate, rotate, and then resolve any effects. So I've got an X here that's not going to do anything. Then I will do three because I'm getting plus one per support. There's one underneath. So three damage to you. Minus one reduced by one, looks yep. like. So two. two damage. You're doing some work. Okay. Well, I'm going to cast my own arcane bolt as my first action. That's going to, wait, what's the opposite of the clock? This way. So I did it. 
Oh my gosh, another blessing. I got another blessing. Renewed Warlust, four health and two cards. Nice. One, two, three, four. Now I will say this. Hmm, there is all of my abilities. I will say this. I, I feel like the orcs can rush blessings quickly because of so much stacking, but I do feel like their blessings are a little bit weaker. Sure, um, and it makes a little sense. They're a little less religious than their... Uh, yeah, I would assume. I mean, I, I don't see them as, you know, like holding any particularly impressive mass or anything. Um, okay. And then I've got one action remaining. I've got an arcane bolt charging on me. I've got this person here doing things. Let's... What's your hand size? Curious, for no reason. Five, for okay. no particular reason. I have a feeling that you have the same card in your hand that I have in my hand. Oh man, I have, I've got some I've got some good beats here. If this turns out, uh, four, five, six, seven. Do I have to have more than eight or more? Ooh, for no particular reason. <laughs> that, I might not have that card in my hand. I might have it. Who knows? Um, I think you should just pass your other action and draw your eighth card. I'm gonna go ahead and stack this up. Come on. One more time. And he goes all the way to the start again? Yes. And how many cards are in your hand for no particular reason? The cards in my hand are now six. All right. And then I will pass it over to you. Okay, so everything rotates. Um, he's still just doing the one prevention on everything and then the arcane bolt isn't quite doing anything yet. Um, my first action, Mm, it's gonna be, you're never gonna not have against. Uh, I'm gonna play an ability here. <laughs> yeah, opportunity to strike. Uh, two, yeah, opportunity to strike. I'll just do two damage to you and rotate. Okay. And then as my next action, I will play Frenzied Vargeist. Um, now I play a unit, so this is gonna rotate me again, which means I get another Did blessing. Bless? Uh, bless you. Damage, I do this much damage to my opponent, to an X, so none. And then this is the one that lets me remove the highlighted unit. If I do, I gain an additional action. Okay. So if you play a unit there, obviously that'll All be right. good for yeah, me. Yeah, my mega boss hasn't been doing much. And then uh, my blessing is Turmoil of Souls. It's an instant. Four damage to my opponent. Shuffle two cards from my opponent's hand into their deck. <sighs> Random, I'm guessing? Mm. Yes, sir. There is really, that's really the worst thing. Do you get um, to see him? I don't know. Doesn't matter. I don't know what they do. <laughs> Look at these though. These are really good. Rattling Cry, deploy two immediately, and then I had an opportunity to strike as well. Okay, cool. See, what I was looking at is casting a removal ability here and then playing an opportunity to strike, which is quite For a nice. lot of damage, yeah. So they shuffle back in? Yep. And those were your two actions. See, so you look at your hand dwindling away. Yep. Well, I, I decided to curve out, right? So I stacked my hand, had my options, and then started playing the cards I actually wanted to see. Um, and we'll see if it paid off. Okay, so I've got two blessings out. So there's one left. Okay. Um, and I've created a, a semi-trap for you here. Oh, no. Um, You've activated my trap card? Well, just the reality of if you don't get rid of the Arcane Bolt, that's seven here. Um, Removed. Does nothing yet. I have a lot of damage on it. And you know I can do seven with this. Take four damage plus one for each support. I take four. Take four. One and three. There's your trap right there. Well, it's reduced by one, so okay. two. Yeah. Okay. But I, I'm just on board showing quite a bit of damage here. You are. You certainly are. Which is why I want to do something about it. You should, if um, you can. Let's... But I like these things, too. <laughs> yep. I mean, what's an arcane bolt, ultimately? Just a casual seven in the teeth. But I think that it's really showing some of the nuance in terms of, like, me putting an arcane bolt down starts putting, applying pressure, mm -hmm. uh, which affects what you have the options of doing. Although I'm about to take one in the teeth, too. And this one removes stuff, and you deal uh, damage? Deal damage, I remove the highlighted unit if it's here, and then if it was removed, I get an extra action. Okay, we're not gonna let it. We can't let that happen. Correct. All right, let's cast a deadly chop with this auric, or not cast, use the ability. Remove a highlighted spell or unit right across. So remove that arcane bolt and deal one damage, which is prevented by your crypt shield. Yep. I believe, does it say uh, units or just abilities? Highlighted enemies. Enemies, yeah, so everything. And then I will pass, and that will let me draw a card. 
and it'll be over to you. Okay. So I so rotate. Arcane bolt taken care of. Uh, this will do one damage. Ding. This will do two damage. Ding. Ding. And then it's my action. Now you've got an arcane bolt to deal with. I do. But I uh, hate to tell you it's coming in at 10 damage because I have a double stack here. Yeah, I'm aware. Now it's important to note also while we're here, a unit can only be stacked up to three cards total. So I've achieved the maximum stackery. So I'm going to... It's time to discard a card to gain two health. First action is carry and feast, so I'll do three to you. Oh, right. Ah, oh, you undead nonsense. And then I will um, go ahead and discard a card to heal two, and it'll be your turn. So just a recovery turn, huh? I expected better of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, rotate, rotate. Take 10 because of Bone Splitter Shaman's ability. I'll have an Orcast support to increase it by three. All right, so we're getting down to it. You're at eight, I'm at five. That's right. And this is uh, okay. interesting to say the least. How many cards you got over there? Two. I'm not doing it. I'm not giving it to you. And then he's gone next turn, gone next turn. Yep. Clear slate. All right, I'm just going to do a Brutal Smash ability here. Two damage to my opponent, and I trigger the ability objective. So I'm one away from a third blessing. Yikes. And then I will pass. Okay. So I rotate everything. Uh, they both clear out. And now we are in some dangerous times here. Danger zone. Hmm. Two cards. You see how it happens? I do. See and then it's like, wait a minute, I don't get any new options. So the first thing I'll do is carry and feast. So I'll gain two, you'll lose two. Ah, that's so good. Um, and then I will go ahead and pass to draw a card. Perfect. Oh man, where were you? All right, so this... Right, so we're down to six to five, by the way. Yes. So you're at six, I'm at five. This is super close, actually. Rotate, rotate. We'll do four damage here. This one goes away. Down to one. All right, now I got two actions. Put me out of my misery. And I hate to tell you, I do have an opportunity strike. Excellent. So you just do two direct damage. Technically, I'm doing five because you have no units in play. So it was Whoa. kind of the, the last Great action. game. That's now awesome. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, flip up these blessings just to see. So I've got Might of Gork. This is going to do three damage, three damage, three damage. So nine damage total, which is great. And, and these, these Orc blessings feel very like simple. It's nice. It feels very thematic, right? What are you showing over there? Uh, Orb of Immortality. Ignore any damage from highlighted enemy, which is everybody, uh, or ally that would defeat you. Instead, gain four health and expire this blessing. So when you would it's do a kill shot, oh my it gosh. just Can gained four. Can you imagine four, if you would flip that flip up? It. Yep. And then the other one is Supernatural Horror, which is passive. Highlighted units are dormant, which is all of your units. And that lasts for three turns? Yeah, because That's it's got three slots. So <laughs> it's three turns of just nothing happens. And then my final smash and bash, instantly five damage to my opponent, rotate all of my units to their final corner. Which could be significant. Yeah. yeah, that could be insane. Immediately. But you can see, obviously, like if I flip this instead of this one, and mm -hmm. you're just dormant for three turns. That's insane. That's game bending. Espe this was game bending too, honestly. Especially because those things don't, they don't rotate, they don't, you can't do it. That's, a, that's an incredible blessing. Yep. So there we have it. This is Warham what we're going to call Warhammer Champions. I think the full name, Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions. Obviously, when we're in the, the shop here locally, nobody's going to say that much. Uh, <laughs> Warhammer so Champions. I think we're going to call it Warhammer Champions. That's probably the way it's going to be referenced uh, for those of you searching for it and looking for more information. Uh, we're going to be carrying this game and supporting this game as best we can moving forward based on some things that are happening uh, right now behind the scenes. So if that happens, and assuming that happens, we can't wait. This game looks incredibly good, and honestly, it was a lot of fun to play. It is a lot of fun. It's, and these are just the starter decks, And right? this is a, it, it's fun because it's different. Yeah. And, and it's a little bit like Light Seekers when you have the, the rotating thing, but it's got a nice structure to it. It's got a really cool um, flavor that's happening. It feels very much like the game wants to feel. I yeah, I mean, that's I, a fair I think, thing to say. You know, for me, it's a lot like, uh, similar. it's similar in a different way, but it's a similar kind of thing with Destiny where, it was doing different things, mm -hmm. and it made me value cards and time and actions in a different way. Same with here, where actions and cards and time are being managed in a new kind of way. So yeah. it doesn't just feel like you're playing the same old card game. Yeah. Um, and it's it's very cool. I mean, I think if you're into this 
setting and theme, this is a great card game for anyone interested, really. Excellent. All right, guys. Well, thank you so very much for watching. We have more support for Warhammer Champions coming. Check out our website where you can find our blog series teaching this game and more. Thank you for watching. Until next time, keep playing.